All right, we're gonna try again, guys. Uh, last time I tried to stream at 1080 pixels. I think that was a dumb idea. We're gonna try 720 pixels. I've never seen anything and thought, oh yeah, I, I desperately need to see this bigger resolution. So anyway, let's see. We are continuing to play Baldur's Gate. We are uh, playing as the Yes Chad. Previously, we escaped an alien ship. We got involved in a refugee crisis. Now we're exploring a goblin, a village raided by goblins, hoping to find a mage who can cure us. I also recruited a, a good boy dog. We have, a, uh, we have successfully recruited Scratch the dog to our team. Uh, and I feel like my life is complete now. I 100% I, I of the game just by getting Scratch. We are still in the goblin village. Now, last time, not only did I kill a bunch of goblins, I also uh, basically brassed my way past a few guards. So I'm wondering if we can actually talk our way out of some of th these issues here. Or, get the, or maybe infiltrate their little cult. Oh, that's a little rickety looking. Hello. Volo's Guide to Baldur's Gate? I wonder if Volo will say anything if we if we get it. Well, wait, how? Come on, guys, where are you going? Go right here. Oh, we have to jump. Okay. A poorly drawn map of a city is captioned in flamboyant script. What follows is the most thorough and accurate account of the city and people of Baldur's Gate, the sordid gem of the Sword Coast. An editor's note in crimson ink follows. V. This volume is startlingly a startlingly accurate, save for the nonsense about the Black Dragon Gate. It is not alive, no matter how many vagrant hags claim otherwise. Commission someone else to draw the map. E. Okay, so E must be Vol uh, Volo's editor. Let's pick it up. And then let's jump back. Oh, Asterion needs a new silly hat. Hold on. Do -do -do. I have old floppy hat. I was sure I had one more hat. There it is. Frumpy hat. Equip. Ah, yes. Very frumpy indeed. Need something? Just admiring your hat. <laughs> all right. Let's take the lead. I think I already raided all that stuff. So there were a bunch of trolls in here eating a dead tiefling. Uh, we somehow convinced them to join up with us. They'll answer a call if we if we need help. You rotten meat of un undisclosed variety. Grilled roth ribs. Roughly cut ham. I hope a roth is just an animal and not like a thing. Sausage links, pork belly, salami. That seems edible and normal. Now, what was weird is I definitely got, like, a weird item from them, but I'm not sure where it went. Dark One's Blessing. Gain temporary hit points equal to the Charisma modifier. Detect thoughts. Can read the thoughts of certain creatures while talking to them. Ooh, I should put him in the lead, maybe. The thing is, I kind of like having Bernard as the front man of the group since I get to play a Yes Chad with him, right? But there are a lot of situations where you might want to put one of the other guys at the front of the party. Another pole. So I guess we can beat these up. Names and heights have been carved into the wood over the years. The last two read Maggie Terrans and Marcus Terrans. Twins, perhaps. Aw. It was a little family's home, and they got marauded by... Not orcs. What were they? They were ogres. That's what they were. The true and... Whoa. The true and impossible adventures of... Tenebris Moro? There's a bunch of stuff over there. Okay, we'll have to go poking around. Let's talk to these goblins again, see if they have any information for us. Hello, hello. Seems like a good moment to talk. What's the roundup? Nothing. Unless you like trash. Keep your paws to yourself, and I won't cut them off. Hmm, okay. Any of the others have anything interesting to say? Where are they? How'd you know? I just do. Ah. And the others getting drunk off that junk. Everything here is ours. Bagger off. Oh, they're not picking a fight. They're not being super territorial. 
I don't think I'm gonna murder these guys yet because I don't know if they killed anybody. Maybe they're just po here poking around for themselves. I know they work for the Absolute, which are the bad guys, but... Oh, look, Goblin Graffiti. Ha! <laughs> Gobble! <laughs> Gobble art! I want it on a t-shirt. I guess that's supposed to be like a gnome. It's a dead gnome, yeah, with a uh, arrow in his gut. Hold on, let me get a closer look at the, go the goblin here. <laughs> a work of art of a a Picasso. Let's see here. Oh gosh, someone was playing hopscotch. I'll take that. Take all the buckets and shovels. A missing poster. Missing children. Maggie Terrence, Marcus Terrence, Mathen Deach, Rochelle Kirk. Well, if they put a missing poster up, that means the kids went missing before the attack happened, right? Because you wouldn't put that up in the middle of a goblin raid. Okay, there's a ladder to get up the top. This is where the bad guys were congregating before. So there's probably... I don't see anything else up here of interest. Yeah, we caved this in. What's that? Shabby door. I don't see anything... Oh, there's a book. Fables of Faerun and a child's drawing. Shoot, I wish I hadn't caved this in. Uh, maybe I can jump there somehow. Hold on. Climb back up, guys. We want every book. The, I guess the idea is you cave it in in order to, uh... Oh, rope. Nice. You cave it in in order to get an advantage in the fight, but then after that it becomes harder to navigate. So let's try jumping our way over there. I'll get hurt if I do that. Can I get a little closer so I don't fall? 2 HP's nothing. Alright, I'm just gonna take the minus 2 HP hit. What the heck. Whoa! Donk! Okay. Fables of Faerun, the dim-witted drow. Long ago, in the city of Menzo Baranzan, a drow wizard called Zad studied magic in the Academy of Sorcer. Each ten day, the Archmage would ask Zad to demonstrate his newfound skills, and each ten day, Zad would fail. Sorcer educates only the brightest of pupils, warned the Archmage. Your scholarship must improve, or you will be expelled. That very night, Zad s slipped out of Menzabaranzen to seek the hidden city of Mind Flayers, Orindal. The library there boasted the most complete body of knowledge in the whole of the Underdark. I'll learn about all that there is. Wait, I'll learn about all that is and ever was, vowed Zad. The Archmage will have no choice but to keep me. Yet the longer Zad searched for the Orindal, the more lost he became his body weak and his stomach empty. The drow fell to the ground, and reality faded. Zad awoke within a vast circular hall, lined with tomes and tablets, untold knowledge etched upon them. Orindal, I made it! I will know everything! He exclaimed. A wide smile crossed Zad's face. He barely noticed the tadpole wiggling just above his le left eye. Yes, said a voice in Zad's head. Everything. Ooh, okay. So the drow went looking for the Mind Flayers, and the Mind Flayers got him. Okay. So this must have been a child's room. The kid would draw here, and that's their little kid's book. So let's pick it up. Ah! Sneezy. All right. Goblin Brawler. Ah! <laughs> Nothing. The True and Impossible Adventures of Tenebrux Morrow, Volume 1. An excerpt from the True and Impossible of Adventures of Tenebrooks Morrow, a pulp serial following the real-life exploits of an interplanar ship's captain. The real Captain Morrow is known never to have left her native water deep, and emerges from her rooms at the yawning portal only to exchange scrawled manuscripts for fresh meals and ink. Okay, so she's some nutter, and they wrote her story down. Unless it's an unreliable narrator. Maybe it's all real. Uh, his red dragon, thus dispatched, the knight had no choice but to leap for my ship crashing to the new bride's deck even as his mount was swallowed by the eerie gloom of the astral plane shifting tides. Faithful Norals was upon him instantaneously, clawing and biting, alas in vain. Astral projection thwarts even the fury of a tabaxi cabin boy, and the treacherous Githyanki only laughed as Norals' formless blows passed harmlessly through him. The knight's silver sword came about in an arc that missed Norals entirely, but neatly clipped the spiritual cord anchoring the tabaxi's stalwart soul to the plane. I mourned as my faithful feline companion faded from existence, but did not hesitate. The Githyanki only smirked lazily at my charge, anticipating the futile efforts of another bound by the laws of this plane. But that is, but that is not has never ha okay. But that is not and has never been Captain Tenebrux Morrow. 
Unlike poor Knowles, I had entered this plane in my full flesh form, a fact I demonstrated by thumping the warrior solidly between the legs. He tumbled over the new bride's rail and down into the mists, even as a fresh horde of dragons rose from the distant dead citadel of Tunarath. So it's either a complete nutter or it's an actual spacefaring adventurer who got st got stuck in our world and ended up as a homeless guy. Can we use the well? From an overgrowth of moss, the well looks unremarkable. Throw a coin into the well. Peer into the well. Leave. I think the smart thing would be to investigate, but I think the yes Chad thing to do would be to throw a coin into it. Coin disappears into the well. After a moment, you hear a soft clink, not a splash. I didn't get my wish. <laughs> Climb down the bucket rope. Peer in. Now let's pe take a peer. Peer into the well. Uh-oh. Himbo time. <laughs> Natural one. Hmm. I can't tell what's going on here. Dry stones line the wall, but the darkness below is impenetrable. Leave. Now, can someone smart do that? Can Asterion investigate? Let me, Hembo. Doesn't look too deep, and the old bucket rope feels strong enough. Peer, let's have him investigate. The he, he may wear hit silly hats, but at least he has something under them. Dry stones line the wall. At the bottom, something gleams in the dappled light. Climb down the bucket rope. Uh-oh. Okay, this is an alternate es entrance to... Oh, there's my gold coin. Thank you! <laughs> okay, this is an alternate entrance to whatever this underground chamber is, and it's definitely creepy. Spider silk cartoon with a guy with a guy in it. Animal carc. Why would stealing an animal carcass be bad? Oh, a great sword. Yes, at last. Well, I guess I've got a really good sword for uh, for Bernard. But I'll go ahead and send it to him and I'll compare it. Okay, five to fifteen. So a great sword is even better than my plus one long sword. So I should be trying to get a plus one great sword. I'll give the long sword to someone else because it's a one-handed weapon. Elvin's weapon training. Long sword, short sword, short... Yeah, he's proficient. All right. Now, is there a reason to not give him that? Is there, like, a reason a dagger is better for him, or can he still sneak attack with it? I'll try it out, see if he can use it. What else we got down here? A skeleton. Can I hit the web he's on, or do I have to hit him? Wait, I don't want to kill the guy. I want to free him. Is there any way to free him? Well, let's see if this knocks him down, hopefully. Nope, he's just ash. Okay. And there's a skull. Okay, now I wonder why that's considered a crime. Is it because I'm uh, disrespecting the dead or something? Okay, I don't see anything else here. Clearly we're going to fight some giant spiders sooner or later. An old backpack. Ooh, a loot. And an emerald ring. Okay. A bard got, got a whole bunch of spider silk co cocoons. Wonderful. Let's save real quick. I'm getting bad vibes. Is it like a waterfall? No. Come on, camera. It really, really doesn't want to let me go in here. <laughs> Follow them, camera. Ooh. An Icarus egg clutch? Where do I go from here? What is that? An Edder cap. Oh, okay, they're like the spider dudes. And they caught us, okay. Edder caps and a phase spider. What the hell's a phase spider? They can teleport! All right, all right, all right. So they're pissed because we attacked their egg clutch, basically. I'm not going to use arcane recovery quite yet. Mage armor. If we're in for a long fight, this might be a good idea, right? Until long rest. Let's just do it. Yeah, let's do it. Oh, we cooked them. Okay. Still doing ethereal jaunts. And they've got the high ground. Fantastic. It's infested. What does that mean? If, am I going to like hit him and something's going to come out? Come on down, buddy. Come on down, buddy. 
It'll be fine. If I hit the spider web, will it fall and take damage? Let's do it. There. I hit him. Nice. Keep him healthy. Whoa, he dived dive back up here. Oh, you know what might be a big brain play? Would be to play Compelled Duel on that dude so that he doesn't beat up the rest of my companions. Pay attention to me. He saved against it. Okay. Where are you? There you are. 98%. We got him. Oh! And Will is dead. I let my companion die. Okay. Hang on. We gotta help our boy. And he's dead. Wow. I feel like I could have done so much better than that. Ah. <sighs> I can do better than that. That sucked. I need better tactics. So my problem was uh, I didn't utilize Will's magic very well, and I let Gail, uh, Gail's ass was left out in the wind. Uh, ZD says, revive scroll, oh man. Uh, uh, I, how are you liking the game so far? I haven't picked it up in a few weeks. I like it. Uh, I mean, I don't do a lot of like modern AAA gaming, but I'm really impressed by the graphics. Uh, I'm really impressed by... Uh, the freedom you have to explore and do a, do a bunch of things. Okay, how do we big brain this? What seemed to pr create the problem last time was I attacked the eggs, and it's like they know they know when we're f screwing with their eggs. An underground room, so we can at least rest here, maybe, or <laughs> take a bunch of junk. A burnt journal. Can we read it? I guess we'll have to pick it up and read it later. Oh yeah, and I don't know. I don't know if he's gonna like ask me if uh, he wants a magical artifact or if I'm just supposed to be smart and give him one without him asking. You know, all you have to do is say please, Gale, if you want a, uh, your fix on a magic item. Disorders of the nerves and mind, a treatise. Uh, ZD says I never played the previous games, but I have played uh, games similar to it, like Divinity and Dragon Age. Yeah, I think D and D's in, uh, inspired a lot of RPG type games. Oral Histories of Faerun. So, uh, now, were those games D&D inspired? Because I'm kind of, now that I'm getting into D&D, I kind of want to go back and find video games based on it, right? <laughs> do 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 Oh, you don't mind me. I'm just going to relax here. Spider Step Boots. Immune to being enwebbed. Fantastic. A journal filled with hastily sketched diagrams of spiders and various spell runes. The captions are largely written in code, save for a few passages near the end that are penned in shaky common. They can sense my devotion. It draws them. I hear them in the shadows, whispers from the Dark Mother. I woke to a gift, wrapped in spider's silk, a pair of boots taken from a heretic's corpse. Loth sends her daughters to reward my faith, to let me know I am on the right path. Another gift, the corpse of a drow, sigils scarred upon his face. An arachnomancer, one with the power to inhabit the spider's form. It's a message. A calling. My blood already dries upon the dagger. Her blessed image carved into my skin. Oh, so did he turn himself into a Spider-Man? Is that what happened? A ritual diagram. Read. An ornate design is drawn upon this parchment, depicting a ritual of some kind. At the bottom, two figures, a spider and an elf, are sketched within overlapping circles. A single word is penned beneath them. Transcendence. He was a crazy spider cult dude who turned himself into a giant spider man. And a lot of, probably some nasties down there. Good way to insta die. Well, boy, it looks like there's something down there, though. There's probably a safer way to get down there, I'm sure. Uh, DZ says Divinity is based off 5E five five e D&D, &D, and Dragon Age was made by Bioware. All right. Those wacky. Those wacky cultists. All right, let's have a look. See, spider silk cocoon. So basically, they do not like us touching their stuff. Bang! They like sense it. They know when we're messing with their stuff. He's no longer infested. Okay. I'm assuming infested is some kind of condition where I don't want to be near him when he's like that. Like he's infested with spiders or something. Can I shove him? 40% chance. Let's do it! Go! I failed the athletics check. How close is he to dead? That won't do it, but... So let's try to knock him prone. He saved. Oh, wow. He's rolling great. 
Can I have you on my team, Edder Cap? That's my blessed weapon, right? Nine turns remaining. 49% disadvantage. No, that's not what I want. Oh, great. Gale died. Why? Did someone hit him? So he automatically failed his saves? Wow, okay, that's weird. Look, he's got magic weave glowing around him. I bet that's that's some foreshadowing. Alright. I'm not ready for this fight. Dun dun da da dun da 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 dun dun da 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 You spent a lot of time watching them walk from point A to point B point B in this one. Uh Z D, I'm gonna head off. Have a good one. Thanks for joining, D Z D. Wow, a haste helm. At the start of combat, the wearer gains momentum for three turns. Uh, okay, what is momentum? I, 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 I know that's some kind of like rule where it's like you uh, can move thing through things more easily, right? Ah! Bloody hell, he has a bomb? I didn't know about that. Oh, boy. Okay, let's try to take him out quick. The goblin boss. Oh. Stop! I give up! I'm a mercy, please! I know things. If you let me live, I'll make it worth your while. I promise! Talk and you might live if it's worth my while. Run along, goblin, before I change my mind. I want everything of value you have. No mercy, kill the goblin. What would be the yes chat approach? Well, I think the yes chat approach would be to kill him. No, why? How do we get him? Oh, I know what to, I know what to do. Yeah. I guess we're encumbered too. Yeah, uh, Bernard is encumbered. There, send it to the camp. Let the let the women carry it. A wooden hatch. Oh no, that's not what I want. Hold on, hold on, gnome, we're coming. I didn't know what that was. Release break, break lever. Cut me loose! What's in it for me? Free him! Bag of Kamara. There's pustulant thugs. Well, get on with it. Get on with what? You seem a little confused. I freed you a little conversation with... Get on with what? You saved me. Now you'll extort me. That's how this works, yes? I'd rather know how you got caught. You owe me nothing. Yes, my reward. Now, uh... You owe me nothing. Nothing? <laughs> Asterion disapproves. Uh... I could extort you if that's what you want. I'd rather know how you got caught. Uh, my own fault, really. I should have dropped my pack and outrun those bastards. Alas. Take my pack if you can find it. The only reason those goblins caught me was its weight. I'll travel lightly from now on. Well, I won't do that. I'm going to walk encumbered carrying pots and pans. You're a little far from the home for a deep no. Nah, strong silent treatment. There's comment? Oh, okay, wait a second. I, I didn't see the comments on Twitter, sorry. Uh, writer Colin is here. Also, Base Paladin, you are encumbered. Breeze Malaire join. Writer Colin's here. Uh, writer, Magic Missile or Chromatic Orb would be better. Which Bolt is a bad spell? Unprepared. Okay. Let me look at it. Charmed, I'm sure. That one. All right, yeah. It, it was auto-prepared, so I'll probably go uh, to camp. And first I'm going to unencumber... Uh, all my junk. And we'll read the books I collected. I want to read all the books in Baldur's Gate. <laughs> Shanty's for the bitch queen. I think I, uh, I've i read it already, so I'll go ahead and sell it. Bye-bye, Shanty's for the bitch queen. All right, let's read these books. All right, old school book. Uh, a weather-worn and faded school attendance book. A school's attendance log fills the ancient pages. As the pages and days progress... More and more pupils' names vanish from the 
entries. In urgent script, a note in the margin states that someone has to investigate what's become of the missing children and their families. Ooh, okay. Yeah, the kids were going missing from the village before the goblins attacked. Paladin owes and their tenants. I guess the only reason I have that now is for, like, character purpose, right? He wouldn't want to sell that. It's his precious book. A stamped handbill. A tattered, well-handled bill posted to recruit adventurers. Uh, adventurers wanted for perilous and profitable quest. Master Larokin, the arcanist of Athkalta. Athkatla, the recluse of Ramesses Tower, seeks brave and enterprising inter individuals to delve treacherous temple and recover storied artifact, the Night Song, for preservation in Baldur's Gate. Only stout of heart and keen of mind need apply. Fame, glory, and incredible fortune assured. Okay. Yeah, okay, that, that was mentioned to me. Ooh. All right, that's Larokin's contract, so we need to have that to claim the prize. Oh, and another one. Yeah. Oh, okay, these are different. One is two and one is volume six. What's this one? Ilmat Ilmater hears the martyr's cries, takes in the ill and the oppressed. When one to help, the other dies. Then by Ilmater they are blessed. Jurgle, or so it's often said, once gave away his bony throne. For Kelimvor he tracks the dead. Make sure that dead souls do not roam. Kelimvor, lord of the dead, will take your hand when death arrives. Make sure souls are correctly led to all their proper afterlives. Okay, I read that one, so this must be the one I didn't read. Azuth, the god of wizards all, who spend their whole lives learning. He grants their spells, both big and small, for Mistra always yearning. Bane the tyrant, the black hand, make sure the strong do rule. He spreads his darkness through the land, praised by the harsh and cruel. The Shaba will bring forth your doom, unless you chant her prayer. Split from Timora in the womb, she brings bad luck to spare. Okay, cool. So you can get like a whole little alphabet of these guys. Okay, volume volume 9 of the alphabet books. Uh, volume 9. Milil is the lord of song. Pray to him for inspiration. Hear his call and sing along. Let his art be your salvation. Merkel is the lord of death, of hopelessness and endless things. He'll come for all at their last breath. Lords and presents, uh, lords and peasants, crooks and kings. Mistra, goddess of all mages, she provides and tends the weave. Revered by many through the ages, all magic we from her receive. Okay, now Mistra got mentioned in another poem, but that was uh, for wizards. Yeah, okay. Azuth and Mistra are related somehow. All right. The Folly and the Fall, I read this. A faded handbill advertising the works of the sharp-tongued traveling troop. Journey through the jungle. The adventures of one Baron von Baron and his goblin guide Jaw as they braved the thick dungeons. The sun had just fallen below the horizon when I first heard its call. A thousand reed pipes at once, whistling a single beautiful, terrible song. Ulu Talong, said Jaw. It's coming. Jaw dropped her pack and scurried up the nearest biter. With a bit more effort, I climbed a tree of my own, and the two of us surveyed the grassy ground beneath. Awoo! There it was again, above and beneath and all around. So close my skull vibrated from the sound. The ferns and foliage under me rippled and swayed. Jaw held a finger to her lips to demand my silence, and in one motion, it snatched her. A vine? A tentacle? It hardly mattered. The hunter had found its prey. Jaw's scream swelled, then faded, as Ulu the Long dragged her away. I leapt down to give chase, but the creature left no mark behind. The grasses were untrampled, the shrubs unbroken. I had only the memory of that harrowing call to guide me. All right, so there are creepy vines or tentacles running around here. A primer on mythical beasts. This thick, gold-trimmed tone is embossed with decorative outlines of fantastical beasts. Let's see. Oh, I read this. Yeah, the, the miniature giants. I'll read this again because it cracks me up. Each chapter of this book describes the cultural origins of a different mythological beast. Chapter 5, the miniature giant space hamster. 
Very little is known about this particular cryptid, though stories say they tend to choose well-muscled human males as their steeds when they deign to visit this plane. According to legends, this creature retains a wellspring of indescribable power known only to itself, though it provides its steed with perhaps mystical, perhaps mundane courage. Unsubstantiated rumors claim the creature has a taste for human eyes. <laughs> All right. I never know if this is just like random goofy stuff or if this is like foreshadowing something later. On added antidotes, part two of the Basics of Alchemy series by Haskin Zesliathen, a deceased dragonborn who lived a life of difficult pain and commendable selfishness. Now, how come selflessness? How come some of these are white and some of these are orange? Does orange mean it's like a rare or unique item? Yeah, I'll go ahead and read this. Uh, let me see here. Let me get this guy's name right. On antidotes, part two of the Basics of Alchemy series by Haskin. Zeliasfin. Zes... Zesilafin. Zesilafin. Okay. <laughs> Got it, guys? Haskin Zesilafin. All right. A deep crease in the spine makes the booklet fall open to reveal one recipe in particular. Neat writing in the corner marks it as an antidote for all known potions. This is it! The recipe that made me decide to publish my notes. The story might not interest you, but I shall record it for posterity. Feel free to skip to the actual recipe. I was sitting in the elf song, sipping my usual hot cocoa, the heat soothing the pain in my scaleless hands. A small child, human, stumbled through the door, sick as a dog. All the other patrons seemed like they wanted to help, but nobody could pay for an antidote. For a stranger's child. Meanwhile, the ingredients were just lying around in the kitchen. Every single one of those people could have saved that child. But only I knew how. It felt like a crime. Recipe for one bottle of antidote. Extracts needed. Salts of mugwort. Suspension of bullywug trumpet. Method. Slowly trinkle salts into suspension. Stir clockwise until the concoction's consistency turns almost chewable. It might turn slightly green, but this is purely aesthetic and has no effect on the antidote itself. And remember, when in doubt with alchemy, just recall the rule of three. Thrice the same ingredient. Forms an extract. Excellent. Okay, salts of mugwort, suspension of bullywog trumpet. Good to know. Death and divinity, a godly guide. Death is too powerful a force for even a single god to contain. It is a duty that has been passed from hand to hand, splintered into smaller pieces. Disease, war, funeral rites but there must always be an overseer of the cycle as life falls away. For countless eons, it was Jurgle, the lord of the end of everything, uh, presided over mortality with his unblinking stare until even he grew weary. Young Baal, Bane, and Miracle must have thought themselves conquerors when they came for the god of death, yet he used their ambitions to free himself. Miracle claimed primacy over death from Jurgle's bargain, but even he does not uh, rule death alone. What is murder, if not the most violent of deaths, seized by Baal in his incessant greed? What need would there be for noble Kalemvor to judge passing souls, if one deity could hold the process entire? Even gods can die after all. Those who worship death should remember that above all else. The War Between Salune and Shar A dusty volume that speaks of the conflict between the sibling goddesses Salune and Shar, after Salune ignited the sun and brought life-sustaining light and warmth to the universe. Okay, so she's like a Prometheus type. Drop item throw, examine. Ah, oh, it's like a little dwarf. A child's depiction of a happy sunlit scene. Highcliff's Journal. The private thoughts of an ambitious apprentice. The pupil surpasses the teacher. My master weapons are almost complete. There's just one component left. Samson says the designs are a failure, but what's he know? He can barely p see past his own belly. I stash the prototypes and blueprints for now, but just you wait, Samson. Your legend is fading, and a new one will rise in its place. A, tw a tattered journal. This is from the Spider Guy's cave. A journal filled with the hastily sketched diagrams of spiders and various spell runes. The captions are largely written in co Oh, yeah, 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 I read this. This was the loony guy. Okay, that's the tattered journal. A uh, bloody journal, the regrets of a surface elf, penned on a bloody screed on Lolf. Read. Though originally a screed on Lolf penned in blood, this book's crimson script has been smeared away in several places, a different hand writing atop it. I recall my life upon the surface with more than regret. I weep for the decades spent treading the murky waters of profanity while my true queen waited in the shadows. Even my name, 
Eliette feels foreign and foul upon my tongue. A high elf, exalted by Loth herself, my drow captors cannot fathom it, but I see their house's downfall in visions granted by the Spider Queen herself. When that day comes, when some unnamed whelp from an insignificant house cuts the matron mother's throat, I will escape. I will find solitude. I will worship Loth with my very soul. Okay, so it must have been like an above ground elf. Yeah, a high ground, a high elf uh, kidnapped by Drow and made to worship Loth, and then she became an, a Loth worshiper. Oral histories of Faerun. Gith and Mind Flayers. This thin tome is bookmarked with scraps of illegibly annotated scraps of paper. This book comprises several chapters, one for each cited source. It claims to contain first-hand transcriptions of the oral histories of several storytellers throughout the realm. Chapter 4, Palador the Swift, 700 years of age, wood elf storyteller hailing from the Wood of Sharp Teeth. It took me several ten days of quiet habitation in the wood before the venerable Palador felt comfortable revealing his presence to me. The longer I stayed, demonstrating I was no threat to his health and peace, the more open he was to gentle inquiry. This tale, relayed to me on a chilly morning as we stoked a small fire between us, was like none I had heard before or since. I asked if it were fiction, and he insisted emphatically it was as true as his own right eye. Long ago, before my eyes and ears, before your lonesome quill, dear scribe, there was an empire of people, or perhaps only belief. An empire of brain-eaters, soul-wasters. They called themselves illithids, the flayers of minds. The children of Gith were bowed, bent in service to the flayers, a passionate people made to serve, made to serve a cold belief. Oop! Doi! The flayers were untouchable, their minds a great oppressor. No proud will or passion could break Gith's children free. free. Until at last a reckoning, its source unknown, its power unproven, by its events history-making, the cowed would not be cracked. Gith's children fought back valiantly, their freedom theirs, their, the flayers bent and broken till today. So that's why the Gith Yaki are not fan of geek mind flayers at all, okay? Disorders of, of the Nerves and Mind, a treatise. A medical companion describing varied mental disturbances in their treatments by the cleric physician Glenn Earl Mack. There came to me a woman who sh I shall henceforth call R, greatly distraught at the unusual tempers of her husband, who I shall henceforth call B. Three months prior, he'd suffered night sweats, crying out from sleep that he bore the mark of, of chaos. Two months prior, he'd taken to call himself by the name Saravok. Ooh, one month ago, he'd speak of little else but the throne for which he is destined. I attended to B at the couple's farmhouse. He sat calmly at the table, an unknown book clutched to his chest. I detected no curse nor loathsome spirit upon him, nor the presence of magic. Yet upon shining the light of candle flame upon him, he raised the book high and exclaimed, The deaths they shall bring awaken the father, and through them he will rise. I snatched the book from his hand and flung it into the hearth, where it burned not in red or yellow flame, but pure black. I, it left but a single scrap, reading. He foresaw his coming death and seated his essence across the land. Be shivered and sighed, as if waking from nightmare. He had no memory of the book, nor the words he had spoken. Diagnosis. Unspecified neurotic enthrallment. Treatment. Herbal tincture of garlic and drace. Sipped thrice daily until exhaustion lifts. Okay, so he got hold of some evil book. Oh, is this it? A burnt journal. Thick, fibrous webbing covers, uh, match the cover, as if the seal, as if the seal of volume shut. Let's read it. Most of the book's pages have been carefully burned away. Those that remain contain a single sentence, rewritten in varying stages of agitation. In her form, I find ecstasy. The spell is not enough. All right. He was trying to become a spider, and he wrote that over and over again and burned his journal. Blacksmith's note. Specimen metal, hardness 9.5, very hard, melting point unknown. Color silver, markings, red laceration, selected with yellow dust. Source under dark notes. Gift from redacted, faintly sulfuric order, uh, odor. Forging unsuccessful. Will not melt or warp at standard temperature. Okay, this is where we got the uh, like the hellish metal. So the blacksmith was well working on the hellish metal. The infernal iron. Uh, a pleasurable deal. The shocking truth. That's the. I read this. This is the interviewer who sold his soul to the devil so he could get his play <laughs> produced. 
the approachable East Volume 6, printed on delicate, oh, wait, what's that? Printed on delicate paper, this journal records Rian Forbex travels across the land. I must say, for a place uh, for a place with so many orcs and goblins, Thesk is a remarkably pleasant land, a true melting plot, where all are accepted, and quite a lot seems to be permitted. Alas, the crew I sailed here with were imprisoned by the harbor master, but I was soon on the road known as the Golden Way, and it lives up to its name. The wealth of a continent marches along the road. Furs from Neverwinter and iron from Nashkel flow in one direction, while silks and jewels flow the other. I have heard so many stories of the world. The Goblin Way passes through Rashomon, through the waters of the Horde Lands, and onto the continent of Karatur, a land of empires, dragons, and beasts I'd never dreamt of. I am so close to Rashomon, but what was once my dream now sounds so mundane. Last night I made camp and was joining and was joined by a charming fellow. I told him my dream of she seeing Rashomon, and he laughed. He claims that Rashomon is nothing compared to Thay, and invited me to visit the court of the Zulkirs. It seemed rude to, rude to turn down such an illustrious invitation, so I will see what this Thay has to offer. Then Rashomon, and beyond! Intricate blueprints for three impossible, impressive-sounding weapons. Yeah, we gotta get this to High Cliff. Read. Precise arcs and neatly drawn lines from the blueprints of three weapons, a great sword, a sickle, and a dagger. Each length and angle is marked with exact measurements, and forging instructions are printed carefully along the bottom of the page, emphasizing an unusual ingredient, susser bark. The susser bark can only be applied to an ordinary, unmodified blade. Okay. Finish the masterwork weapon. Okay. What happened? Are they smart enough to know what to do? The Underdark. There's only one place to find Cersor Bark, the Underdark. Okay. The Curse of the Vampire. Okay, those are all my books. Let's sell the junky ones I don't need. Oh, Rotten Mushroom. I don't need that. Hey, he's offering money for it. Why not? Oh, he's offering me less and less of a discount. Why, I wonder. Okay, will he take his plans back? Oh, damn it. So where's Highcliff? Okay, it's not the same blacksmith. No, I'm gonna hold on to it. Yeah, I'm gonna hold on to it in case I under, ever run into this high cliff guy. In that case, let's head to the camp. And I'm gonna call it here, because I'm gonna visit some friends in the afternoon. Alright, I'm number one Marmaduke fan. I love you guys. I will catch you later. Paladin's base, says Ryder Colin. Alright, saved, and we'll call it there. Bye bye everybody!